Right, so we'll take a look at this. This is my 2000 X registered Toyota Yaris. Now, the Yaris has been around for 14 years since the Mark 1 version, the original version, came out the same year. But this one's a lot better. This has all the optional added extras, including this sports exhaust, this sports uh, spoiler, uh, and these 15 inch alley wheels. So, fully loaded. And we'll take a look inside. So, we get two compartments. One here for your sunnies and a glove compartment as well. We've also got electric windows. And the inside's all sort of nicely done. Let's see, there's plastic everywhere, there's no metal showing. So, for a nine grand car, which originally it would have been up towards 15 grand, depending on what you had. This is quite good. You even got a CD player. And the ashtray, which can come out. And of course, cigarette lighter. This extra bit here. Lots of bits, lots of uh, room. Just flip open, put this chair forward, and we've got a three breast seater at the back with a cup holder here, a cup holder here, and a cup holder here as well. Two cup holders at the front. Five cup holders, cup holder for everyone. No fighting about that, is there? And then, to put these seats down, it's so simple and unbelievably good. I love these seats. Right, you, f you push that down and pull this forward, like that, like that. And then, clip that, pull forward, clip the, there's a back thing here. And while I'm standing in the damn way so I can't pull it forward. <clears throat> okay. Word of warning, take these out, flip this forward, and all of a sudden you've got this flat loading space. Right, completely flat loading space uh, to load your stuff. And then to put it back, you can simply shove that back. And this is quite good actually, because this can move forward and stop there, or there, or whatever. This is great because if you want a bit more room in the boot and leave your passengers no leg room, right, you can have that. Or if you want to give your passengers a load of leg room but no space in the boot, and actually there's a fair bit in the boot, don't get me wrong actually, it's quite good. I, I fitted a couple of duvets, um, recently I put a couple of duvets in the back and pillows and they all fitted in. Like that, and like that. And all of a sudden, you've got your seats back with your headrest. So, this isn't any uh, Toyota Yaris, this is an M&S Toyota Yaris, no, it's actually an SR Toyota Yaris. So I basically need to get this body kit, all these bumpers, side skirts, and the rear bumper are the optional extra of an SR. Everything else you see is actually an additional extra, essentially it basically came with an additional body kit, but you had to pay for alloy, alloy wheels, etc. This has everything on it though, so this has everything I want on it. CD player, no exhaust. In fact, the only thing it's probably not got is the fenders. Fair enough. 
Now we'll get inside this side now. We'll uh, take out the gear and uh, we'll uh, switch it on. Right. So I'll show you some of the things on here. Uh, it, it shows you the temperature of the outside as well as the time. And then you press trip, it shows you average fuel economy. Uh, the fuel economy at that though is second and the average speed you've been travelling at since it was last reset. Then if you look at the dash, you've got um, you've got trip A, trip B and the Odo. So this has done 79,000 miles in 14 years. And then you can also change the brightness of it. From our, oh, there you are. If you, change it, you can change it from mile an hour to kilometers an hour. If I switch on the lights, you can actually change the brightness or dim it as well. See? This is quite easy to uh, use as a CD player. You just simply take it on, comes up with your back, eject, and that's very easy to use for your radio. We'll just switch to radio. You can easily adjust it just doing that. So easy to program. And easy change back from CD to radio. Easy. All the digits are very, very, very big. You may think, well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, it makes things easier. Okay, here's the trivia of it though. This was mainly bought by older people originally. But then again, why doesn't younger people have it? Actually, it's, it makes sense to have this because this car has really good speakers for what it has. It has good speakers. It's very easy to uh, um, use and to drive. It's immaculate, which I'm going to actually show you now. So we're going to go for a drive, shall we? After all that. Oh, one the final thing. Bizarrely enough, it's also got... Uh, Electric windows on either side, and you can even lock the opposite window, which is great when I had a dog in the car the other day. Stop into it. It's also got central locking as you expect, and it's also got rear fog as you expect, and electric mirrors. So you get pretty much everything you you need for a, a car. Okay, there's no iPod thing, but. This is born in 2000, the iPod wasn't even around then, so what do you expect? Right. Overall, this is my favourite car. I've had four cars, and this is my favourite car. Even better than the Mercedes A-Class, which also came out at the same time. Um, and I'll show you why. Right, let's do a drive, shall we? Let's see what it's like to drive, shall we? And that's the camera backwards. Yeah, this is going to be great. We'll have some statistics, shall we? This actually has a 1.3 litre engine and produces 86 horsepower. May not seem like uh, much, but in a car it weighs 
about 850 kilo, 900 kilo. It's a lot because then also the Nord 60 takes place in just uh, 11.2 seconds. That's on paper. And it will go on to the top speed of 109 miles an hour accordingly. And I doubt that actually it will not do that. Because on the motorway, it will happily sit at 70 all day. There's no struggling, there's no grumbling from the engine. This has a criticism though, as being a bit dull. I'm not so sure though. Okay, maybe the engine isn't. It's responsive, it responds quite quickly in higher gears, lower gears, shall I say. But, and it is a big but. Um, that's not really the point. I mean, if I put. Okay, we're driving through town now, so it's a bit hard to show you, and I'll show you in a minute what I mean. But the handling. There is where the fun is. A freaking bus from there. Right, so the handling seemingly is actually very responsive. Nothing to about 4,000 RPM, but then it kicks in. And you don't realise it's so smooth, you get end up getting pushed back into your seat. So essentially, what it does is uh, makes for a unusual driving experience. Then there's the handling. It goes where you want it to point. And not only that, it kind of limits you because it, because it's. Uh, Turn the wheel more, and it still keeps on going and going and going. It is, it's bizarre. If you go into a corner, you think, oh, it's too fast. And you turn the steering wheel a bit more, and it's fine. It's completely clinging on into the kit corners. You will cling on to white lines perfectly. So, overall, 
this car is absolutely brilliant. Okay, maybe there's not much street rep about it, but it's much more reliable than any other car I've had. I say that I don't have cars very long, I'm not seem to get written off. Uh, this seems to be impeccably good for the money. And it's 14 years old, used and Even after all this time, it still feels pretty solid. 